With the first commercial spacewalk on Thursday under the Polaris Dawn program, once again Elon Musk puts NASA, Boeing, and Blue Origin to shame. They did something that no organization had ever done before. This is the very first time SpaceX has ever taken all the air out of a Dragon capsule, and this is the very first time they have worn an advanced spacesuit that can withstand the harsh environment in the Van Allen radiation belt. It is truly a tribute to the Polaris team's bold risk-taking and years of preparation. So, at this point, have you you ever wondered how SpaceX built the new spacesuits for Polaris Dawn's private spacewalk? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. At 700 kilometers above Earth, SpaceX has demonstrated its new extravehicular activity, EVA spacesuits, during Thursday's historic SpaceX spacewalk. The mission took place higher than any previous NASA spacewalk and featured cutting-edge technology. The 106-minute spacewalk witnessed Polaris's commander, Jared Isaacman, and mission specialist Sarah Gillis separately exit the spacecraft and individually perform a series of suit mobility demonstrations to test the performance of the spacesuit in the vacuum environment of space. Mission pilot Kid Petit and mission specialist Anna Menon remained seated, managing suit umbilicals and monitoring vital support systems and telemetry on Dragon's displays. The data gathered from the test will be the vital stepping stone for SpaceX's big ambitions for the suit. The the company aims to improve its technology and make the suit more manufacturable with each generation. The ultimate goal is that you can put on the spacesuit and go out and get work done anywhere in the solar system and not feel like you're wearing anything more than you normally wear every day, Christ Trigg, SpaceX's senior manager for spacesuits, said. To make it possible, engineers had to focus on modernizing the suit since the first generation. According to SpaceX, the new EVA astronaut suits are more innovative and an overall improvement from SpaceX's previous ones. It's kind of like a suit of armor made of fabric, SpaceX principal spacesuit engineer Eric Krauss says in a new video the company posted to X. The video also gives us more details about the suit, such as new features, including enhanced mobility through new joints, a helmet and visor with a display, and a fabric-based material for ease of manufacturing. While based on the IVA suit, the EVA suit's soft portions become rigid when pressurized, requiring flexure and rotational joints for ease of movement. This aims to avoid of making making the suit become something like NASA's traditional suits whose comfort is not the concern, astronaut survival is. By contrast, for SpaceX, the comfort also plays a vital role, as Elon Musk used to share, as quote, Because if you just inflate the suit, you know, you just basically, you know, you're kind of like one of those, like, uh, balloons at a party or something, you know. So it's, it's quite hard to make the, to still be mobile in an inflated suit um, and um, ha have the joints move and stuff. And This difference largely stems from their intended purposes and the environments they are designed for. NASA's spacesuits, particularly the Extravehicular Mobility Unit, EMU, are designed primarily for short-duration spacewalks, extravehicular activities, or EVAs in low Earth orbit, such as those conducted at the International Space Station. On the other hand, SpaceX's vision includes supporting missions that may involve longer durations on other planets, such as Mars. This requires a suit that can accommodate the physical demands of extended wear and various activities making comfort a priority. There are many challenges in designing such types of suits, so testing the suit should be the focus of the entire privately funded five-day mission. Moreover, maintaining the suit under suitable pressure also aims to protect them from ironic situations. A typical example is the case of the Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, who was the first person to walk in space and spent 12 minutes outside his spacecraft on the 18th of March, 1965. His mission showed some of the risks associated with designing spacesuits. By the end of the spacewalk, Leonov's suit had inflated in the vacuum of space to the point where he could no longer fit back in the airlock. He had to manually release air to get inside. Another feature of the SpaceX brand new suit is the additional Faraday layer, or a conductive cage, around the suit that shields it from external electric fields. SpaceX's Christ Trigg stated that one more issue is crew thermal comfort during EVAs. The suit will be exposed to an extreme thermal environment, and the suit's interior must be ensured to be comfortable and safe to touch. The helmet features a heads-up display with a transparent screen. This provides critical telemetry to the crew, including pressure, temperature, and relative humidity, without obstructing the astronaut's view. It also features coatings for astronaut safety. The EVA suit visor is made of polycarbonate and is coated with copper and ICO, or indium tenoxide, said Krauss in the video. These two coatings together reflect the sun away from the crew 
as well as reflecting infrared heat back to the crew when they are facing deep space. Not only the Polaris team and SpaceX enthusiasts, but also astronauts are very interested in Thursday's suit test. Retired astronaut Chris Hadfield recalled his own experience walking in space and the suit he wore, models that would be considered outdated today. Uh, the space suit that I wore for um, my first two spacewalks was old. I mean, it was designed in the 60s and um, built in the early 80s, so 40 years old. This one, they've used uh, latest of manufacturing techniques right from the beginning, integrating everything together, trying to make it as simple for the crew as possible. The Canadian astronaut added the new SpaceX EVA suits are easy to get on and off and are made flexible, so movement is easier. Tim Peake, the last British astronaut to go into space, said on X that it would be very interesting to hear the crew's full feedback on the new EVA suit mobility, something he said was incredibly important yet hard to achieve, especially fingertip fidelity. He added, elbow mobility looks great though. All of these enhancements to the EVA suit are part of a scalable design, allowing teams to produce and scale to different body types, as SpaceX seeks to create greater accessibility to space for all of humanity. Building a base on the moon and a city on Mars will require millions of spacesuits. The development of this suit and the execution of the spacewalk will be important steps toward a scalable design for spacesuits on future long-duration missions as life becomes multi Planetary. To put it simply, if SpaceX's suit can endure a dangerous place like Van Allen, then radiation on the Moon or Mars won't be a problem for them. The four-person Polaris Dawn mission launched early September 10th morning with the goal of making some spaceflight history. The Polaris Dawn mission is the second that Isaac Mann has funded. He has declined to give the price, but the missions are estimated to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. In 2021, the private pilot and now-trained astronaut who made millions from his electronic payment company Shift 4 flew on the Inspiration 4 mission, the first orbital space flight by an all-civilian crew. That mission included a cancer survivor, as well as a data engineer who won his seat in a raffle draw. Elon Musk's SpaceX has operated both missions and sees them as major milestones in making access to space easier and cheaper. Musk plans to take astronauts back to the moon and eventually to Mars. His company is developing the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, called Starship and has carried out four test flights of the 120-meter-tall system. The next is due in November. The mission's fourth day includes a Starlink demonstration. The Polaris Dawn crew has teased an exciting surprise message they intend to transmit down to Earth via SpaceX's mega constellation of Internet satellites. Day five of Polaris Dawn will be spent preparing for the return journey home, provided all the other mission goals have been achieved by this point. The crew members will also conduct about 40 science experiments during the the mission. Polaris Dawn's Dragon is expected to splash down six days after liftoff, performing a final series of deorbit burns on a return trajectory for terra firma. If everything goes according to plan, the Polaris Dawn crew will parachute into the ocean in one of a handful of potential landing zones off the coast of Florida, where a recovery ship will retrieve the spacecraft and crew. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.